morning, Christ Church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? It's beautiful outside, oh, right? Oh, loving it. Well, loving it was so beautiful outside yesterday that I decided to trim all the bushes at my house. You guys have hedges at your house? Yeah. Well, I have some about as tall as that TV, so I'm out there with my skill, you know, like not my skills, but my skill saw. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trimming them bushes down, just having a good old time. And later on at work that night, I started getting phone calls and text messages. I had cut the fiber optic line. Oh, no. To the cable in our house. And, uh, you know, I, I was getting messages through the night, and then this morning my mother-in-law was really up and trying to figure out what's going on. We have game show <laughs> on our TV 24-7. It was so quiet when I came home this morning. And, and Carrie's on the phone with AT&T, and they're trying to get it figured out. And, uh, you know, I just had this random thought this morning. What if... You guys ever heard that old song, Jesus on the Main Line? Yeah. Tell him what you want. Back when we had rotary phones. What if... When our line got cut with the Lord, we got so excited about it, you know, or nervous about it, and we needed that connection to be remade, right? Yeah, amen. And I don't mean to put any baggage on anybody this morning, <laughs> but, you know, that's just something to think about as we worship God today. We're going to sing a song called Chain Breaker, not Fiber Optic Breaker, um, right. but just keep that in mind, you know, let's, we need that same urgency, and that's that good guilt the pastor's been talking about, amen? Amen, right. amen. Let's stand and worship. We're going to do a couple songs this morning. Here we go. One, two, three. We waited for the day. We gathered in your name. Called in.
finally got the word that you know, finally. We're going to do a song called Chain Breaker. Yeah, it's not Table Breaker, but Chain Breaker. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Great job, worship team. Let's get our hand uh, to those guys again. Great job, gentlemen. Great job, as always. We are so blessed with a great... Uh, group of performers here at Christ Church, our worship team and Katie and uh, Heather, everybody that does the worship uh, team stuff, you guys do a great job. We appreciate you all very much. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christ Church. We'll welcome everyone here inside the uh, uh, church this morning and everyone joining us online. Great to have everyone this morning. Uh, we got uh, quite a few pray uh, prayer and praise uh, items to touch on this morning. 
Uh, first off, uh, uh, we're just uh, grateful you all joined us this morning uh, because we have another great message in our sermon series, Unloading the Baggage, which will come up later by our beloved pastor, so we're looking forward to that. Our prayer uh, requests this morning are as follows. Uh, we have uh, James King, Debbie's son. Uh, she's not here this morning. He is still in the hospital. This is a, the, uh, yesterday morning. He's still in the hospital. Um, the blood clots are better as they continue to remove as they continue to remove fluid from his heart. But we did get an update this morning. He is home. Uh, yes, praise God. He uh, let's see what the note said here. He went home uh, last night and he is resting today. Uh, so yes, we are definitely praying for James and Debbie and the whole King family. So yes, praise God. Uh, we also have a um, Randy Hopper, which is Susie Harden. Uh, brother, his surgery was a success on Wednesday. Uh, we pray, uh, praise the Lord for his good report. One of his carotid arteries was 100% blocked, and the other one was 80% blocked. So we're thankful that that surgery went well for Randy. Uh, we got Julie Arnold. Um, she's doing better following the loss of her brother and dad. Uh, please uh, continue to pray for her mental health. Um, we have a prayer request uh, for my brother-in-law, Scott, uh, Julie's brother, uh, Scott Zorman. He went in Friday for a procedure, for a back procedure. We've been praying for Scott that he was anxious about. And basically, they got in there, and his blood pressure got too low. So they had to cancel the surgery, uh, which was hard. Uh, Julie and my sister-in-law were there. Uh, but we, uh, we have faith that that happened for a reason. Uh, they couldn't continue with the surgery. Uh, he was released yesterday morning, so he's going home. He's going to get a PCP to get the blood pressure relegated so he can have the surgery another month, which is good that it happened that way, but bad. He's got to wait another month because he's in a lot, a lot of pain. But we have faith that the Lord has got a, gr a grasp of that situation, so we're thankful for that. Um, we're going to uh, announce this morning something uh, that we haven't talked about in a while that the pastor and I were discussing. Uh, we're going to keep praying for Lois Denny and Morris Gentry. As you guys know, they are no, uh, are they're members, of, yes, they're members of our church, our family, but unfortunately they're not here in person uh, because uh, Lois is a resident at the Plainfield Healthcare and Morris is a law, uh, member of the Springs in Mooresville. Uh, so we're going to keep praying for them uh, as our family members here at Christ Church. And also, if you guys care to ever drop in on them, like I said, uh, they welcome any visitors. Uh, like I said, Lois at the um, Plainfield Healthcare and Morris at the uh, uh, Springs in Mooresville. So keep praying for, the, praying for them. And, and if you see in your time during the day or if you ever get a chance, go visit. They're two wonderful people. So we have a, a couple other prayer requests. We got Brother Gary uh, Perkins uh, is going to go for a test tomorrow morning at 915. So we're praying for uh, Gary. Uh, we have uh, Pat Oliver, um, uh, Katie, uh, uh, Christy and Katie, uh, um, Carrie, I'm sorry, two K, two, I had Katie looking at me. Katie's like her notes, Katie, but no, Christy and Carrie, uh, their mother is uh, going to have a, a, a PET scan tomorrow. So we're praying for that test uh, to go well. Um, we mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, back to my brother-in-law, uh, uh, Scott Zorman. He has a coworker named John Green, and we prayed for John's salvation. John's got terminal cancer, and we have just praying for, you know, that whole situation, but mainly for his salvation. And we do want to let you all know that he did accept the Lord. Uh, he did, yes. Uh, amen, yes. Uh, our brother, uh, brother-in-law Scott shared with us that uh, John did uh, accept the Lord as his Lord and Savior. Uh, so we're, Jesus as Lord and Savior. So we're praying for that, or praise for that. Our final prayer is for uh, Will Eckert. Um, he is, uh, the notes here, he's been attending the church with his family since Easter. He should be here, but he's not going to be here today. Um, he's having a dental surgery uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, or today at 2 o'clock, um, after church. But, he, of course, he's not going to be here. So we're going to pray for Will uh, this morning that the procedure goes well today. I know he's uh, had a lot of anxiety. Uh, the pastor and I were discussing before the service. So we're going to pray for Will. So let's bow our heads and go to the Lord this morning. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, we are praying for him. Yes, so we'll pray for him. Well, let's go to Lord uh, for all these prayer requests this morning, Lord. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, what a, what a great morning you've given us. Beautiful weather. Um, just couldn't be more blessed to be in such a wonderful place. Our church family here at Christ Church, we love uh, everyone here. We love these uh, members we're praying for that aren't here with us. And um, we just want to lift them up to you, Lord. Each and every one of them are so uh, important to us and uh, special to us. Uh, we're going to continue to pray for James King, Randy Hopper, Julie Arnold, Scott Zorman, Lois, Maurice, uh, Pat Oliver, uh, Will Eckert, and uh, Gary, as well as John Green, Salvation. We praise you for that. We praise you for how you're going to be in control of all these situations, Lord. We know that each and every one of these individuals are looking to you. We're praying for them. We're thinking about them. We want nothing but the best for each and every one of them. We love you, Lord. Uh, we're so thankful again for this morning. We're excited about this message this morning for the Unloading the Baggage uh, sermon series. Uh, just each and every message that uh, the pastor brings us is special and just uh, impactful. So we're looking forward to that. Again, Lord, just be with us all today. Uh, just all you do, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen. So, okay, we have a few. Did you have, oh, sorry. Oh. I'm not done yet. You're, you're not giving me that fast. We have some praise reports. Uh, we have a awesome praise. We're going to put it up on the screen. Heather Mott. Uh, there's a picture of Heather and Jace. She was baptized um, last Sunday. So yes, we um, yes. So we have got a. Uh, she was baptized last Sunday at the Life Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and there's the picture. And now we have a video of that baptism. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. Great video. And we're so happy for Heather and Jace and the whole Mott family. So uh, amen to that. Uh, we also want to say a huge thanks and praise to all the people that helped yesterday uh, as all the work being done on the church grounds. Uh, we hope and pray that no uh, everybody's... Uh, uh, issues with their muscles and everything are okay this morning. So we hope uh, that everyone's doing well uh, this morning. Uh, we have another uh, couple announcements. Uh, Katie Estes, uh, we're going to have a QR code up on the screen. Uh, nomination again that we've been talking and uh, discussing the last few weeks uh, for Gospel Fans Award as Horizon Female Vocalist of the Year. This is addition to the three nominations that she has received from the ICMA. Uh, there's a QR code. If it's not, I know it's in past uh, services, so you could always go back to past services and get that QR code. Um, if you would like to vote for Katie, in addition, our friends Chris Golden and Lulu Roman are also up for some nominations if you would like to vote for them. So I think we'll have, oh, there we go, on cue. Thank you, Sierra. Yep, there's the QR code to vote. We invite everyone to snap that with your phone there if you can. And uh, finally, we have an announcement for our drama ministry. We meet every other Monday uh, from 6 to 8. Our next meeting is uh, Monday, April 22nd. There it is. So we invite anybody who wants to come and have a good time. Uh, we sure do have a good time for those that are a part of that ministry. So uh, I want to thank you all again. I, uh, we're going to continue to pray uh, for your son-in-law and his family and again everyone thank you for so much for being here it's such a blessing to be call this place home and uh, we're going to bring our beloved pastor up for today's message so thank you everyone Amen. thanks Jason thanks my friend how are you doing I'm mighty fine fine as frog hair as I used to say down south good morning Welcome to Christ Church. So glad to see each one of you here today and uh, glad that you're able to be with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. And speaking of baptisms, not only did uh, and Angela mention that our little grand boy Walker got baptized too because he's with Heather right now, but of course he'll have, to, he'll have to get his own baptism because it 
Yeah, you can't get it by proxy. So, but anyway, but at least he knows what the experience is like. He also went on a hike in the Garden of the Gods yesterday, little Walker did. So uh, that's our upcoming grandson, if you didn't know. We have one coming in September. So, yeah. So anyway, but speaking of baptismal, uh, our baptism, we've had a couple of people ask, uh, including Will, who's not able to be here today. He's getting his... Uh, his dental work done today at 2 o'clock, and he's asked us to pray for his anxiety and things. We're praying for you, Will. I know you and Michaela are watching online. August 5th, mark your calendars, first Sunday of August will be water baptism. We're going to do it. We've got some other things going on in the early part of the year, and the way that the summer's been, it's still a little cool yet. So normally we would have one about May, but I thought, hey, I just got it in my spirit. We better push this out. So we're just going to go ahead and push it out until August. And if we need another one, we'll see about how things are looking later in the year. But uh, August the 5th. So if you have received Christ. Okay, then whatever that first Sunday is, August. <laughs> then let's do it then. Let's do it August 4th. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, we could have a Monday baptism. I mean, you know, why not? You know, that's right. The church that Jace goes to, they have a Friday night, a Saturday night, three or two or three Sunday mornings, and a Monday night service. So maybe we're going to start a Monday night service. So, And uh, Jace and Heather go to the 9 a.m. service on Sunday. Then he goes back at 1 o'clock and serves in children's ministry. He's one of their volunteers for children and then volunteers with the youth on Thursday. So maybe we're starting a Monday. But thank you, Andrea, for keeping me straight. Yeah, first Sunday of August is what I'm trying to tell you, okay? So, yeah, thank you so much. So whatever the first Sunday of August, uh, this way it gets, we have that. And then because we have our church picnic later in August and some other other things coming up. So it just seemed to fit right with our uh, schedule. While you're marking your schedules, now Andrew, help me on this, June 23rd. Fourth Sunday. That's the fourth Sunday following Father's Day, right? Sunday, Mr. Sean Stewart, wave your hand, Sean, our, our youth leader and our World Minister, Royal Rangers minister. He'll not only be giving us a report from their trip that many of us helped the Royal Rangers, they'll be going on 1st of June out to Yellowstone. He will not only share an update on that trip, but he is going to preach the morning message that morning, June 23rd. So it'll be the first time we've got a chance to hear from Sean here. Uh, Cartersburg's had him twice, so we thought we better go ahead and get him before Tim just cabbages on to him and keeps him. So so he's going to be preaching for us on June 23rd. So just a few things. I know it's only April the 14th, but things move quickly, and we want you to kind of be aware of what's, what's happening and put those things on your schedule. So good morning, and we're glad that you're here again, and uh, thank you for those joining us online. Let's get right into the message because I'm very excited about the message that I'm going to share this morning, as I am with most of our messages, but some of them have a, just a little bit more enthusiasm. And remember, I've taught you, if you've been with me for a while, enthusiasm just means Theo inside God on the inside of you. There's that, there's that enthusiasm inside of you. And there's just some messages you bring that you say, boy, I, I really believe this is going to help some people. As a matter of fact, Karen, who's down in the children's church, every week the the Sunday teams, whatever they serve, camera, uh, ministry, even if they're not on this Sunday, they get a, 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 an update from me about what our service is going to be, and they get the notes, so they can just look over it, like with Karen, if they're downstairs, uh, and she said, I'm so excited about this message, because it's already helped me in my own life, and so that's very exciting, and just imagine how good it's going to be when I preach it, and that's just on the written paper. So we have been in this series, in a series called Unloading the Baggage overcoming guilt trips and the devil's grip and the purpose of this series is that we make this journey together and as we get this as we go through this journey we lay aside all the baggage that comes on us like we talked about on Easter Sunday we're kind of like Lazarus we have the life of God breathed into us and we come out we were dead but now we're alive in Christ but we're still got all these grave clothes we're still bound up by some things and we have to be loosed and set free well the way we're loosed is through the Word of God John chapter 8 says Jesus said these people had believed in him but then he said now if you continue in my word then are you my students my disciples my followers and then shall you know the truth and guess what happened the truth will set you free doesn't mean that they weren't believers it just means if you want to live that abundant life that God has for you Jesus said you're going to have to walk in my word continue in my word and then you're going to have that perfect liberty and freedom that is you're entitled to so we've been talking about that last week we talked about the shame game uh the first week we talked about being set free from from um 
uh, from guilt. But today we're going to go and we're going to meet an individual that I can assure you, even if I've never got a chance to talk to you very long personally, I will, as Justin Wilson says, guarantee you have met somebody like this in your life and they're called the guilt trippers. Now, not the day tripper. We got good reason for taking the... Not a day tripper, but a guilt tripper. These are people in your life, and, I, and I'll say this with all love and, and respect as, as I was talking to uh, Donnie coming in. We were talking about, you know, Plainfield. You know so many people because it's a small town. It's not as small as it used to be, and uh, it's not near as small as what I grew up in. But growing up in the South, a lot of folks like to send people on guilt trips. So I grew up living and taking many guilt trips. So much of what I'm sharing with you today has, number one, as you're going to see, comes out of the Word of God, but it's things that I wished I'd have known when I became a believer at 16, when I became a preacher when I was 18, God help when I became a pastor when I was 19. Because guilt trippers, these are people who use guilt and shame to control the actions of others. Now, this might be an employer, just hang with we're going to talk about a lot of signs just putting a few and we're not talking about putting somebody on a in a you know on a spot and throwing darts at them i'm just telling you where these things might come from could be an employer could be a could be a teacher could be a preacher <laughs> a lot of preachers instead of inviting they're indicting instead of inviting you to a life of god they're indicting you to the life of god that's why many people don't continue on because they make a decision not out of the 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 their faith of their heart but just to try to appease a little bit of guilt they do something that they're really not wholeheartedly ready for or interested in doing uh parents parents can be guilt trippers so we're going to talk about guilt trippers today. So I looked this up in the Urban Dictionary. That's kind of a thing out there. It's kind of, kind of fun to look at. You just, certain things you don't want to look up. But, but you know, if you, if you have things that, you know, you, you think about, what does that mean? I mean, you can look it up in Webster's Dictionary. But the Urban Dictionary, so it's just kind of like a definition of how we mean it today because things sort of change. And the Urban Dictionary means a guilt trip is, number one, a manipulation tactic. So, for instance, what if I said today... Well, I tell you what, we can't hardly keep the lights on here at Christ Church. We ain't got enough to rub two nickels together. We ain't got enough sense to pay attention. If y'all don't do something, we're going to go under. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to manipulate you, as one of the doctors that Angela works for says, to dig in your jeans and pull out those greens. <laughs> but that's not how the Bible says. It said God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Not a guilt-ridden giver, not a manipulated giver, not someone that's just giving to try to appease the guilt, but someone that says, God, you've been so good to me. You've blessed me and my family. You've blessed my business. You've blessed what I put my hand to. I just want to honor you with the first fruits. I want to honor you with the tithes. That's the what God wants. And there's a lot of other examples we could use from church on there, but it's a manipulation tactic. But the Urban Dictionary goes on. It says, it makes someone feel guilty so that that guilt acts as an incentive to think or behave a way that they normally wouldn't. See, it's, it's when one, purpose, uh, one person either purposely or unintentionally tries to make someone feel guilty, remorseful, or bad about their decisions or choices. Now, why do I say, uh, why, why would I say unintentionally? Because I grew up in that kind of atmosphere. Southern folks are master guilt trippers, let me tell you. Well, I can't believe you'd do me that way. After everything I've done for you, oh, after everything I've done for you. They don't ever tell you what they've done, but they're going to remind you whatever it is they've done. After everything, I can't believe you would do me that way. Well, the only way we did is we didn't do what they thought we should do. So I have to be very careful as a parent not so much as a preacher. You guys are pretty easy to get along with. I don't really have that problem. But as, a, but as a parent or, you know, just as a person, that I don't slip into that. 
because I had a lot of folks in my family. They, that's just what they, that's what they grew up with. They grew up with this, this sort of a mild, manipulative way of doing things. Well, the guilt trip is crafted to get somebody to change how they think, how they act, or they feel. I want you to go with me over to Luke chapter 15. I've got two passages of Scripture, uh, three Scriptures total, but two pretty good little passages. Then I'll tell you, uh, Bob's standing back here. He's going to keep the door open and let the breeze, but he's ready, Tommy, because when your hat blows off, he's going to catch it before it goes off. Because I told him, I told him and Mimi, I said, I got another one of the messages, man. Going to blow your hat off, Bob. Don't let them go down to the Methodist church. They'll have a parking lot full of hats. Jay didn't even wear his today. He's like, I'm not getting my hat blown off. I told him the message Friday. He said, I'm going to leave my hat at home today. But the Lord is so good because he's, he, allowed, he gave me these scriptures that we've probably read time and time again, but we've never seen the little bit of a characteristic of a guilt trip coming in, and I believe it will help you today. Luke chapter 15 and verse 25. Now, again, I am reading from the New Living, you, and that's probably what's going to be on the screen, whatever Sierra chose to do, uh, and then and it's going to be whatever version you want to read. You look it up, okay? So let me just give you, if you're not familiar with the story, this is what we call the, the prodigal son. It's never called that in the Scripture, but it's about the youngest son. He went away. He, he spent all of his inheritance. He wasted his life. He was just a mess, and he comes back home, and the dad is so excited because the father has been standing at the door watching for this young son to come home and uh, waiting for him to come home and but there's another son an oldest son and this is where we find our story now Luke 15 verse 25 meanwhile back at the Justice League Y'all ever remember that when you watch the Super Friends? And you ever notice how that they would, like, the narrator would tell you what they're about to say? Meanwhile, at the Justice League, Batman tells Robin, we must get the supplies necessary to defeat the Joker. And then all of a sudden, you go, doo -doo 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 -doo, and there's Batman. Robin, we've got to get the stuff needed to defeat the Joker. You know, and it, doo -doo. meanwhile, the Wonder Twins are activating their power. Wonder Twins, activate! <laughs> there you go. How you like that, Easton? You can look that up on YouTube later. I know you've totally missed that. I was telling uh, Travis earlier, I said, there's a story, a show I used to watch as a kid. I said, I said, you don't remember this show. He said, we're only nine years apart. I said, well, think about that, though. When you were five, I was 14. So there were some things, you know, we decided because of his father, he did see some of the shows. But, you know, some of these shows you guys haven't seen. Watching a new one on Amazon, if you're interested, though. Uh, Adventure Man secret agent with Patrick McGowan, John Drake, agent for NATO, does the things that no one else can do, drives a little sports car. Look it up. It's a great little show. You'll love it. Trust me. Black and white all the way, baby. Adventure man, Patrick McGowan. By the way, my name's John Drake. That's how it opens up, you know. America has the CIA. England has the MI6. France has something I never can understand. But then NATO has guys like me that do the things no one else can do. By the way, my name is John Drake. And he gets in his... Anybody remember Adventure Man? Oh, my God. Okay, well, thank you, Rick. I, I, I hope I wasn't making this up. Maybe I, maybe I got in a feeding frenzy and passed out. I didn't know. Okay. All right, let's get back here. Me, my wife told me, you can't sing a lot of songs if you're going to get through this message, so I have to move on. But that really wasn't a song. That was a story about a show I'm watching called Adventure Man, Secret Agent, John Drake. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he had music and dancing in the house. He heard, so everybody else is having a great time. So you'll see a lot of things. We, I, I, we'll go on. And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fatted calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Now, once I show you some signs of guilt tripping, you will see it all over this young man right here. I want to tell you now, but we ain't going to get through it if I do. But, I mean, everybody else is, you know, dancing, dancing in the streets, dancing in the... Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I appreciate that. The older brother, now watch. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. Why? Because it wasn't his expectation. His father came out and begged him. Oh, guilt trippers love you to beg. Oh, my Lord. And begged him, but he replied, I'm standing my ground. 
all these years. Now listen, come on now. Don't this reek of a, all these years I've slaved for you. Oh, wow. We're really telling it now, ain't we? I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. Really, come on. You were a young man. I bet you there were some times. Now, come on here. You're just really blowing this thing. But let's go on. Let's give him benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's perfect. I don't know. And in all that time, you never even gave me young, one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fatted calf. All right, so let's just keep this young man in mind in this situation, and we'll put, some, we'll put the pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle. Why? Let's just talk about this. I had to ask myself this. Why do we ever take a guilt trip? Just because I'm invited in one don't mean I have to take it. But why did I ever take one? Well, first of all, number one, it came from somebody I cared about. It came from somebody I had respect for. It's somebody I loved. Somebody, and we'll talk about it a little bit, somebody that I, I cherished the relationship. And I didn't want to do anything to, to jeopardize that. Guilt trips don't work unless there's some emotional connection. Okay? So this young man, he had an emotional connection, and his father had an emotional connection to both of his sons because we could see the loving way that he stood, and he watched out for the younger son to come back, and he obviously loved the older son because the older son was still had responsibilities, and he still had the, uh, he would have still inherited everything he was going to inherit, and so he's using his emotional connection with his father. So one of the reasons we take a guilt trip is because it comes from somebody we care about. Number two, as I've already mentioned, we fear repercussions. See, guilt trippers normally dangle a threat before us. If you don't do this, then I don't know what's going to happen. Well, they don't either, but they're going to try to tell you about it, you know. Well, if you don't do this, then, you know, we're going to have to turn the lights off. If you don't do this, we're going to have to do this. If we're, no. So they fear repercussions, so we jump on the bus. Now we need to, in a little bit, we're going to jump off the bus, Gus. No need to discuss us. Just drop off the key, Lee, and get yourself free. All right. <laughs> That's a good one, isn't it? Okay. So we, all right, so there's an emotional connection. This is why I put up with it growing up as a kid. Because these people I had respect for. I loved these people. Uh, I didn't want to injure our relationship. Uh, and sometimes we might even agree with the accusation. We, we might, I mean, we might literally allow them to somehow so blind us to reality that, the, that we buy into the belief that that accusation is true. Remember last week I talked about the shame game? Sometimes we'll think, well, I'm just, I'm not a good enough son. You know, if I, was, if I was a better son, if I, I was more like my brother Rick, you know, he, he did this and he did that and he did this. And maybe if I, that's the root of shame. We talked about that. Shame. Remember we talked about him last week? No matter what I do, it's just not going to be good enough. And I'm just, I guess I better go ahead and do this right now because this is about the best I can do. So it becomes like this hole that can never be filled, but yet somehow we keep trying to fill it to no avail because somehow we may agree and this is why this young man is keeps bringing it up to his father notice he just keeps saying i have slaved for you but you never gave me a young calf but this son of yours why didn't he say when my brother came back this son of yours in other words it's all your fault if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be having this conversation, and I'd be feeding the kid or the goats, and we would be going in, and me and my buddies would just, it'd just be a glorious day. So let's talk about some signs of a guilt trip, and we're going to see this as we work our way to another passage here in a moment. We're going to go through these quickly. So here are some signs of the guilt trip that we've been to have them, because why do we go on it? Because we, ch we cherish cherish the one we cherish our relationship with people it's because we fear repercussions and we may maybe we agree with it you know i mean how many well we won't get into that but as a 19 year old pastor i wished i'd have heard this message 41 years ago because baby if i had up i'd have set some folks in their spot back in because that's how they would treat a 19 year old pastor not by respect or help but by guilt 
Well, you know, our last pastor, our last pastor, well, yeah, your last, well, I won't tell you what happened to the last pastor, but yeah, you see what happened to him, don't you? But, you know, I didn't think about those back here because I respected them and I wanted to be, you know, I, I you know, tried to fill the shoes of somebody that wasn't me. We'll talk about that in a moment. So here's some signs of a guilt trip. We never seem to be able to meet the other person's expectations. Now, let's go back to being a young pastor. That's why, you know, when Sean and others preach, we just encourage people. We don't say, well, now, if that had been my message, Sean, I'll tell you how it had been better. No, we don't do that. But I can't tell you how many Sunday mornings I would get done so I don't go to the back door no more. <laughs> no, that's not true. Go to the back door, and they'd come out and say, oh, that was a good message. But I'll tell you, oh, brother so-and-so preached that five years ago, and you ever want to hear it preached good, I got a cassette of it. I'll let you hear it. <laughs> okay, thank you. You never seem to be able to meet. See, you always feel like you're doing something wrong. You're always feeling like you're quite not good enough because you don't meet that other person's standard. So you just constantly, constantly on a guilt trip. And then what happens is, listen, my wife helped me with this years and years ago. We were out on the road somewhere, and I was going to do something. I, I, I felt something in my spirit I was going to preach, and I told her, I said, yeah, I don't know if I should preach it that way because pastor so-and-so wouldn't preach it that way. What am I doing? I've been on a guilt trip, and I'm trying to do it like this. And my wife, we'd only been married about three years, Angela said, you know what, though? You're not pastor so-and-so. I didn't marry pastor so-and-so, and they didn't invite pastor so-and-so to this church. You need to preach the way God gave it to you to preach. Amen? All right, so next, secondly, here's another part of a, of a guilt trip. We compare to others who are somehow doing better than we are, or we think they're doing better than we are. Remember what I told you a few weeks ago? I have to watch. Sometimes I'll drive by, you know, churches out here that's got plenty of facilities. Their youth ain't over across the yard. They're Royal Rangers. You know, everybody's in one big building. They got plenty of storage, plenty of parking. And I think to myself, you know, if I was a better pastor, Randy, we'd have a big building like that. If I was a better preacher, Jim, we would have the facility that we need. What's happening? Little landmarks, little mile markers of the old guilt trips that I grew up with starts trying to rear their heads. So I have to navigate it, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But we begin to compare ourselves to, uh, to others who seem to be meeting expectations as proof that they uh, don't need to change. Sometimes as parents, you'll say, well, hey, listen, you know, well, I got mom, dad, I got a lot of things going on, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and I, I just, you know, that, that, that class is tough. Well, your friend... They doing the same thing you're doing. They're on the same baseball team. They're on football team. They're in DECA. They're in this. And they're making straight A's. Why aren't you making straight A's? Well, maybe we don't know why. I mean, but that ain't going to be the way to solve it. Uh, so another sign of a guilt trip is your past mistakes are continually brought up. That's what the old boy did here in Luke 15, what he thought, what he wanted to perceive as his father's past mistakes. Well, you gave that boy your money, he ran off, he got out there with all them harlots and running around years ago, talking about preachers. Now, I guess I ain't too bad, Miss Cindy. True story. I heard a sermon one night, and the old preacher was trying to talk about harlots because he's trying to be King James oriented. I kid you not, Angela was there kept talking all night about halibuts. <laughs> the, the halibuts, okay. So I leaned over, we can't have fish for dinner. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we can't have fish. So, you know, sometimes I got to be honest, Ken, you know, when I think, man, I got a lot of work to do, at least I haven't preached for 30 minutes and trying to talk about the harlot of, of Revelation, and I keep calling it the halibut of Revelation. All I can see is this big apocalyptic fish coming on the scene, you know? Like, you know, the halibut of Revelation 17. Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, my word. So you guys ain't got it too bad, let me tell you, all right? True story, isn't it, Ann? Halibut. Oh, my word. Halibuts, that's what the nuns wear, isn't it? No, no, come on. All right, stop. It's a habit, isn't it? Okay, sorry, my Catholic friends. But our past mistakes are continually <laughs> brought up. That's a sign of a guilt trip. You, ain't, you, ain't ne you know what? You ain't never doing no good. Matter of fact, that, that other thing you did, it wasn't very good either, but I thought you was going to do better. All right, we got to move on. 
I love this one. This is straight from my childhood. Sarcastic or passive aggressive statements. Now, I love my mama. She's in heaven. <laughs> Woo, but I, I can tell you, man, if I had a dollar for every time I, she would answer the phone like this, I could pay this building off and start building the next one. Not kidding. You know, you get busy just because you ain't called every three hours. You know what I mean? Finally call her, get a day. I'm going to call mama, call mama. I used to call her on the road, talk hours while I drove down the road, man. It wouldn't make a difference. Call her up. Well, it's nice to finally hear from you. <laughs> wow. It's good to know you could finally fit me into your busy schedule out there. Got a letter from one of her neighbors one time. Seriously, true story. Got, got a letter, and now I, you know, took care of, I mean, but see, again, I did my best, but I guess my best was, that's what happens, you know, a guilt trip. Lady sends me the letter saying, well, you and your families live in your privileged life there. Don't forget you got a mama. What are you talking about, old woman? <laughs> I'm going to come down there to your single wide trailer, and I'm going to take your nylon curtains and do something that you don't want to know what I'm going to do with them. Listen to here. But I didn't call her. Guess who I called? Mama. I said, Mama, what's Jan's problem? I don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> Honor thy father and thy mother, so thou shalt live long upon the... Mom. And I read, she said, Son, I don't know why she'd write. So, Mama, she only knows stuff you would have told her. Now, do you still want that box of stuff I send you for Christmas? Do you still want all the things I send you? Oh, son, I don't know what got in. I'll talk with her. I'm like, you need to. <laughs> but sarcastic or passive-aggressive statements. Um, all right, let's go on. Here's some other signs. The other person questions your love or loyalty. If you really loved me. If you really loved me. Or if you really cared about this the way I do. Kind of goes back to another thing. Why do we go on them? Another, another sign is we feel like we can't say no without severe consequences. The consequences just, we don't, it don't seem to be worth it, so we bow to the pressure. But here's the problem. We're not happy with the alternative either. We're not, you know, I, I kind of shared with you, you know, I should have preached this around the holidays. You know, you get that invitation to go. You don't really want to go to that party, but you got to feel like you got to go because if you don't go, then you're going to get that phone call or you get that email or, God forbid, next time you see that person, it ain't going to be good, so I don't want to go. I'm tired. I got other things to do I'd rather do, but I'm going to go just to keep this thing from spiraling. Well, Another thing they do, yes, you do appreciate their, their relationship. Their relationship to you is important, but they help you understand that your relationship with them is a privilege. Church, let me tell you something. There's a lot of folks that like to have me as their pastor. And if you don't start packing this place out every Sunday, <laughs> I'm telling you, no, no, I'm telling you, if you don't start packing every chair out, and if these boxes ain't full of money, I'm telling you, by the end of the year, I'm going to be I'm gonna be gone. I don't know who's going to be up here preaching, but it ain't going to be me. Now, how would you like to hear that mess every Sunday? Now, obviously, I was being facetious. Some of you started, was he serious? <laughs> no, but I, that's how a lot of preachers do. I won't ask you for a show of hands, but some of you have been under that kind of mess, haven't you? Well, if I, if I don't see the giving increase, if y'all don't get in here, if y'all don't support my cat ministry, you know, Gary, I need, uh, Gary and Roger, I'm going to need more cat food over here because both these guys have bought, I'm fine with cat food, guys. I'm okay. But if you don't get me some cat food, my cats are going to starve to death. And if them cats die, it's going to be your fault, Gary and Roger, because you didn't bring me more cat food for my cat. You know what their response should be? Well, Pastor, we didn't ask you to start feeding those stupid cats. You started it. You, it's your baby. You rock it. Amen? And now what Elvis sang? It's your baby. You rock it. Remember that old classic song? All right, I got to go. Okay, here we go on. So basically they think they've done you a favor by letting you be in their shadow. All right? And then the last one we're going to talk about then uh, after this one how to navigate i'm going to show you another scripture we work to meet their expectations while the guilt tripper does not even know what our expectations in life are and it's all about them it's all about their expectations their expectation this young man in luke 15 
he wasn't even concerned about the rejoicing. There was a party going on. There's a party going on down here, a celebration. He wasn't even concerned about that. He's out there, you know, if you've been working so hard, go on in there and relax, baby. You know, we got cake and punch and roast beast and just come on. But he's more concerned about his expectations. I have another message that I preached years ago on the road concerning these two brothers where the youngest one got the fatted calf, the other one's worried about a skinny goat. That's part of it. That's what he says. You've killed the fatty gal. I can't even get a skinny goat out of you. Well, it's part of his faith. He thought about skinny goats, and God and the Father was ready to give a fatted calf. That's another message. I'll preach it to you one day. I'll <laughs> blow the dust off of it. See, guilt trippers are good at setting expectations, and they do it early, they do it often, and sometimes before they even think that you might have your own. And then what happens is their expectations become the standard, and your expectations rarely make the conversation. So, with all that being said, and that's a lot of ground right there, how do we navigate a guilt trip? All right, let's go on back to Luke chapter 10. Let's go just about five chapters back to Luke chapter 10. And again, I'm still, I haven't changed. I'm still in the NLT, so you use whatever one you want. And we're going to go down to verse 38 of Luke chapter 10. All right, let me find verse 38 here. All right. All right, here's, here's what he says. As Jesus and the disciples... Continue. Remember, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all ways. Let, he handled everything without sin, okay? And sometimes we think that means like the big stuff, like greed or avarice or something like that. Mm -mm. He, had, he had other things he dealt with, just like you and I. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught now this is not his this is not mother mary listening to what he taught but there's that but again all right but martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing she came to jesus and said lord lord doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while i do all the work sit here you're sitting at the feet of the Savior of the world, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are you kidding me? Have a bologna sandwich if that's what it takes. You know what I mean? I mean, slap two pieces of bread and put some banana and mayonnaise on them and call it done, glory to God. Banana sandwich. But look, tell her to come and help me. But I see, look how Jesus navigated this. But the Lord said to her, see, because a lot of folks, not, no one said, I'm... You're Martha, I know. You've been out there rattling them pots and pans. Mary, get on up and go off in there and help her. And you, No, 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 that's not what Jesus said. But the Lord said, my dear Martha. See, he didn't condemn her. He knew she just didn't understand. She really is the, the one that's hurting here. My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. Mary knew what her expectation was, and she's grasped a hold of it. And I love this. And it will not be taken from her. See, Martha wanted action. She wanted Jesus to take this, this heartfelt expectation, passion that Mary uh, had to sit at the feet of Jesus. She wanted that to be taken away from her and put her out there and rattle in pots and pans. Well, if that's Martha's heart, go out there and rattle in pots and pans. Go be, you go do you. But Mary's doing her. But don't be hating on Mary because she ain't doing what Martha's doing. You didn't see Mar Mary saying, ha, look at Mary, what a what a backslider she is. You know, here she is. I'm sitting here basking in the glory, and she's in there cooking biscuits. What a ridiculous... She didn't say that because Martha had her expectations of what was important. Mary had her expectations, and Jesus knew how to navigate it. So let me tell you this. Number one, take the road less traveled. You've been invited to go on a trip. You've been invited to go on a, on a guilt trip. See, guilt trips work because people have learned how to get you to react to your trigger. They call it pushing your button 
people pleasing or uh, your, your love for that person. They know how to, to push your button. So they activate that trigger and you do what you want. They, you do what they want. So what do you do? Well, this ain't on the screen, but Romans says you overcome evil by doing good. So what I like to say is I'll, I'll do something new. See, the old adage is, if you keep doing what you've always been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've always been getting. Well, if you enjoy guilt trips, then here, here's a bag and see you later. But I don't think you enjoy this trip. So what are you going to do? Well, do something different. Take the road less traveled. Find a new path. So you could say something like this, just like Jesus. He didn't get ugly about it. He didn't get hard about it. He just said, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to do that right now, Martha. I'm in the middle of teaching, and I'm just, I'm just I'm not available to do what you want me to do right now. Or he could have said something like this. That, that's a good point. I'll consider it and let you know. Or my favorite, I just say nothing. <laughs> no explanation needed. Why? You don't care about my experience, I mean, my expectations. You don't really care what I'm, what I'm going to be doing. You don't care what I'm in the middle of. So, you know, uh, Keith Whitley, the great theologian, says, You say it best when you say nothing at all. I had to get that guitar lick in. So sometimes you just like, just say nothing. I just let the phone go silent. You know, I'm, they're rambling. I'll just... Say nothing. Doc Dobbins that we studied under for, I studied under for three years, he said the best way to handle this, and this is a lot of things where I've pulled a lot of this from today, so I hope I've uh, helped you. I spent three years with Dr. Richard Dobbins through, you know, online, or it wasn't online back then. It was in the mail. Uh, he says, you know, if somebody's talking to you and they're really trying to push your button, best thing to do is just don't shake your head. Don't smile. Don't. Because they, they, they used to, you just, it's hard to do. Because you always want to affirm. I mean, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a flesh crucifier because you, you don't want to do that, but you do this. And in just a minute, the conversation wanes, and they say, well, I guess I better let you go. Well, you probably got better things to do, Gary, you know, buy my cat food. So I, that's okay. I'll get a hold of Roger. I know what triggers to push for him. I, I know he's a fireman. I know what he's looking for. That's how you do it. My brother-in-law, he's, he's a master at that, ain't you, James? He did it at the grocery store the other day. Brought it to my remembrance. I tell you, he's like a wealth of sermon resources for me to hang around. And he just the other day, he was at the true story. He was at the grocery store. And somebody, and he says, you know, I just looked at her. And it's not as intimidating for me, but if you're six foot six like he is, and you look at this mountain of a man, and he's just... You cut the conversation short real quick. You cut your losses, and you leave, all right? So... So that's how you do. Number one, you take the road less travel. Number two, watch those road signs because what happens is guilt, guilt puts within you a fight or flight reaction. It late, so you got to label the guilt as soon as you recognize. Now, no, wait a minute. I don't want to do this. This doesn't line up with my purpose on earth. What? This ain't what I was planning on doing. What? What? What am I doing here? See. So here's a couple of questions. Does the thought of agreeing to what's asked you give a sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach? Does it kind of get a little kind of get a little tension in your neck? So what you begin to do is you answer some questions and you begin to make a clear-headed decision that, okay, that's a great idea, but you know what? I don't think that's going to work for me right now. I, I, I don't think that's going to work, but thanks for offering. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for thinking of me, but I just don't think that's going to work. Well, here's the thing. Well, what if they get mad and leave? My old adage is, you know what? I'm a blessing. And if you don't want my blessing, then go find a blessing somewhere else. Amen? So, again, you have to reverse that. They, they want you to think that a relationship with them is a privilege. You have to let them know that your relationship, the relationship with you is also a privilege. What about this? Focus on what could go right rather than focus on what could go wrong. See, I don't know about you, but I enjoy doing the things that I know I'm supposed to do. This is why I'm here. We talked about, you know, your assignment. What, what on earth are you here for? Focus 2024. We've been talking about these things this year, getting you primed for some of these messages, you know. So I'm going to choose to do things not out of guilt, 
because that's going to make me resentful. I want to do things out of my heart to give because that's going to make me cheerful. So again, Angela's going to come up here in a minute. Well, y'all, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Mars just got the light bill and it was hot. It was, hot. It was uh, not hot. It was, uh, what was it? It's cold this summer. It was dark too. He don't like it dark. And he keeps them lights on all the time. He's got that stupid cat house hooked up over there and that thing's got a heater in it and it's running the, the, the electric bill up. And if y'all don't get, we're going to have to close the doors and y'all going to have to go back wherever y'all came from. And from some of you, that ain't looking too good because you weren't nowhere when you came here. Well, what kind of, now what would happen is, oh, I'm sure the offering would be great. But that don't, that's short lived because pretty soon you become resentful. You don't look forward to ministry. You don't look forward to church. You don't look forward to serving God because you've not been invited. You've been indicted. <laughs> know where you're headed. So this goes to the next one. So just simply know where you're headed and offer for them to respect your decision. See, I understand you think I should do something else. I've had this conversation many times in my life, but this is the direction for me that makes sense for me right now in my life. And so I'm going to ask you to respect it and roll with me or not and roll without me. I, I don't know, but this is what I have to do at this point in the game. And then finally, let me, let me give you this last one. So what have we talked about so far? Take the road, less travel. How do we navigate it? Take the road, less travel. Do something you haven't done before. Watch those road signs. When you sense that, man, this is not, I don't want to do this. This is not, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing here. This is not what I'm called. This is not my plans. This is not my expectation. Watch those road signs. Then focus on what's going to go right rather than focus on what's going to go wrong. Know where you're headed. Let everybody know. Do you know where you're going to? What is that, number two? <laughs> And then number three, listen, listen, remember where you've been on this trip because you're going to have to make it again. It ain't a one time and done, okay? I'm telling you that from experience. I'm telling you that from the word. You know, we don't know a lot more about what happened with Mary and Martha that day. Uh, it just sort of ends, you know, Mary's chosen the better part, and it just goes on. We don't know in that relationship. We don't know about that eldest son. What did he do? Did he go on end? I don't, I don't know. We don't know. But I would say that there was probably times where that had to be re-navigated again because it's going to take some time to break the pattern so let me leave you with this galatians chapter 1 verse 10 see i don't know about you but i don't want to go on a guilt trip and i don't want to be a guide on a guilt trip amen and i think in our life because we're subject to these things it's easy for us to okay well you know if i get up here and tell you i'm leaving blah 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 then you'll all show up well no you won't you'll start going looking for another church <laughs> Some of you say, well, hallelujah, I was about ready to leave anyway. Glory to God, I'm tired of him. Good, maybe we'll get some real preaching up in there for a change. I mean, you know, it's going to go a couple of different ways. But that's not the way it's supposed to be done. That's not the way church is supposed to be. It's supposed to come with some enthusiasm, expectation, and some excitement. And oh, but anyway, but Galatians chapter 1. So I don't want to go on a guilt trip. I don't want to guide you on a guilt trip. But here's what we'll do. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10 got this new bible i'm still trying to find my way around isn't that funny okay here we go verse 10 and it's also smaller printed than my last bible so i have to kind of track it you know <laughs> tracking here obviously i love how you know that says it in this here paul saying this to the church of galatia obviously obviously you can tell i'm not really trying to win the approval of people but of god if pleasing people were my goal I would not be Christ's servant. Um, and I'm not picking on my family. I'm just trying, I'm trying to help you guys. I'm trying to help you see some of the things. You know, Paul says that things happen to Israel, so it become an example. So I try to share little things from my life. You know, if, if a lot of my family had had their way in my life, and this was even said, uh, a minister even told me this, well-respected down in Mississippi that knew my family very well, knew my situation. He said, you know, your family would have liked nothing more than you to got yourself a trailer and put right out there behind their house at those little crossroads of Route 3 Union, Mississippi and work some little job and maybe have a little church and have a little ministry and just be right there until Jesus called you home. Your family would have been absolutely ecstatic. 
He said, but the problem is you would have been miserable because God called you not, I don't want to say to something more, God called you to something different. Because there's a friend of mine, my cousin. We went into ministry, literally, we were nine, we're nine days apart. I'm nine days older than he is. We literally went into ministry, two separate churches, one week apart. That's exactly what he did. He built a house across from his mom and daddy, helped his daddy in his, his family business, had a church, loved it, did great. Had, church grew and blossomed and everything. That's where he was supposed to be. But for me, man, I, I was born a rambling man. I won't sing it because you're getting tired of counting. But from the time I went into ministry, I knew that this, even though as much as I loved where I was at, I just knew in my spirit, God's moving me. And, and it took a lot of work on the Holy Spirit and me to make that step because it was scary and it was, it was spooky and it was uncertain. But can I tell you, I'm glad I did. Because I just be, I can't, I can't imagine any place else in Mississippi with a group of people like you that I'd love to have been their pastor, like I'm your pastor, and accomplish the things that we've accomplished and we're going to continue to accomplish. Now, if that would have been my, if that would have been my, I don't want to say lot because that sounds like we just rolled the dice of heaven. That's not how it worked. If that would have been my assignment, I'd have been perfectly happy. There would have been a holy satisfaction, and I would have loved every moment of it, and I would have never thought about moving. But from the time I went in ministry, I knew that God was going to move me and I had to be ready some of my people was happy some of my people wasn't but I had to find out God what do you want me to do and there was many many times a lot of phone calls a lot of letters a lot of guilt trips that I had to to navigate through especially before I met Angela because it up till it was just me and the Lord and you know when you're just sitting at home by yourself getting these phone calls from all the aunts and the uncles and the cousins twice removed saying boy you need to get back down here you know I mean you know, what are you doing up there in Indiana ain't nothing but heathens and halibuts up there <laughs> so <laughs> that's my next series I'm preaching for the month of May heathens and halibuts you know <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna leave you with Let's overcome guilt trips. Father, I'm here to please you. I'm here to love the people you've given me, my family, my friends, my coworkers, my classmates. I'm here to love them. But Father, most of all, I'm here to serve you. And I want to do it with a, with a heart that's cheerful and with a spirit that's rejoicing. So, Father, today we thank you for this message. And Lord, we've covered a lot of ground uh, in these last 35 minutes or so. And I knew we were going to have to move quick, but there's a lot to cover, and there's a lot that we didn't get at all in one, uh, one sitting. There's some of us, we're still parked on, why do we go on these trips? We're still meditating on that. Some of us are still kind of uh, thinking about some of the signs of the guilt trips, and some of us are still at the navigation point number one. How do I, how do I take the road less traveled? What, what do I do the next time? But Father, here's what I know happens. You take this message, and it's all been planted in their heart. The seed has been planted. Holy Spirit, you're going to water it, and you're going to bring these things to remembrance at the right moment, at the right time. And you're going to help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're going to make the confession, I will not go on a guilt trip. I will not guide a guilt trip, but I will please the Lord and I will love those that God brings into my path. But I will complete the assignment that God has given me and I'll do it cheerfully and I'll do it joyfully and I will run my race with joy and I will finish my course completely. Father, there may be some today, and we do not do this by guilt. This is not an indictment to get people saved. This is an invitation to become a believer. If they're here today, and Holy Spirit, you've been speaking to their heart, and they know it, and you know it. I, I don't know who it may be, maybe someone watching online. But today, if, as they've listened to this message, they think, you know, I'm, I want something more out of life than what I've been experiencing. I'm ready for something new. I'm ready to know that all is well between me and my God then that's their invitation. And may today be the day that they gladly receive the invitation to become a follower of Christ. And Father, if there are those here, and if I'm talking to you in this prayer as well, church and those online, then simply uh, may they say this little prayer as their confession of faith. Dear Heavenly Father, I receive the gift of salvation that you have invited me to. 
I received that, that blood-stained invitation that Jesus bought at the cross of Calvary. I accept him right now. I receive forgiveness of my sins. And I thank you, Father, that I'm one of yours. And I thank you, Father, as they've prayed that prayer today. The angels are rejoicing. Heaven is uh, happy. And the name, their name has been written, Father God, in that reservation book of heaven. Lord, we thank you for it. Thank you for these messages, God. Some of them are a little heavier. Some of them are a little lighter. But God, they're all helping us become the men and women of God you've called us to be. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here comes my sweetie. Tell you what, if she don't straighten herself up, <laughs> I'm going to go adopt a cat named Jim. What was her name? Jimmy? Jimmy? What was that? Earless. One of your cat. What was her name? Gemma. I'm going to, if that's girl right here, I'll tell you what, if she don't straighten herself up, I'm going to adopt that cat. And... Oh, that cat. Remember yeah. that cat? Remember the one-eared cat? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I tell you. You just do that. Tell you what, you better straighten yourself <laughs> up, girl. You, uh, if you know what side mm -hmm. your bread's buttered on, you better, y'all ever hear stuff like that? You better yeah. straighten. You better straighten He's up and fly good. right. That's what you better do. He was doing good till right then. <laughs> well, I'm still, this is still an illustrated sermon. I'm still illustrating. Yeah, illustrate on. <laughs> illustrate yourself you on what, out that back when door. I, when, I say, <laughs> when I say frog, you say how high. You're in my ear. When go. I say jump frog, you say how high. <laughs> These are some zingers, remember, from the south. That's yeah, what you say. yeah, a zing on. <laughs> You guys don't have to worry about me. <laughs> Nothing he says can really uh, <laughs> do any damage. All right. So we want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, if you want to give to the church, there are five ways. Um, you can give by mail, obviously, P.O. Box 894, Plainfield, Indiana, 46168. You can give by text. That's 84321. You can give in person if you're here. We have a tithing offering box in that four year, this four year, and up here in front. I feel like a stewardess every time. Every time I do this. Especially I've been on a plane recently. So we're <laughs> they <laughs> They are so bored when they go through that every time. <laughs> I feel for them. And you can give by the uh, church app or online. Now, um, also, uh, Mr. Nolan, he uh, works for, let me look here. He gave me a lot of information, Republic. And this next coming Saturday, they're having the 12th annual uh, Rep Republic Plane Pool event. Okay, it's free, right, Nolan? And you can go. They're going to have all kinds of uh, events there. You can, um, let's see, it's a free event. You can watch teams pull a plane and see who wins. <laughs> Dumb and dumber. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, all right. Uh, it won't be me out there. Um, Nolan, are you going to be pulling? Okay, are you on the, okay, all right. So Nola might be there uh, pulling a plane. Uh, don't retch your back. But they're going to have, like, um, mascots. Um, oh, there's going to be Star Wars characters, superheroes, uh, all kinds of stuff. The Indy 500 race teams. So um, it's going to start at 830 at the airport and be over by noon. So... <laughs> <laughs> ah, shut up. <laughs> so, anyway, if you want to um, uh, something to do next Saturday, that sounds like fun, and it's and it's free, and um, so try it out at the airport. We're at the airport. Oh. Okay. All right. So it's at the hangar, and um, Republic hangar. Yeah. Okay, so let me pray for you before you go. Thank you for being here today with us. If you're new here, don't forget, stop by the Connect desk in the back, and um, Ken will be back there, and he'll uh, give you a gift. Lord, I thank you for being uh, here with us today. I thank you for giving our pastor a wonderful message for us to help us through this life, that we don't have to deal with guilt. We can, um, we can live a... 
a life uh, guilt-free and, um, and following your vision for our life. Uh, Lord, I just pray, God, that you will just touch everyone today, that touch their body and touch their mind, Lord. Give them peace in their mind and um, take away all pain and ailments in their body. I pray, God, that you will just uh, keep us safe till we can be together again. In the name of Jesus, amen.